The error detection scheme works this way. We take the original data and pass it through a coding scheme called the EDC codex. And as a result, we generate these EDC bits. So it's uh, illustrated here. Take the data, pass it through the codec, generate the EDC bits. The two parts concatenated and being passed through the network. At the receiver end, we apply the same codec on D prime. If the outcome is identical to the EDC prime, then we pass the error check. Otherwise, we detect an error. The first example of the EDC coding scheme is parity checking. The example on the left is called single bit R parity check. The way it works is to add a bit called the parity bit, such that the number of ones in the series will be in odd numbers. So from this example, we see three, three, nine ones. So it's in odd numbers. So we pass the single bit R parity check. This scheme, very simple, allows us to detect single bit errors. The second example on the right is slightly more powerful, called the two-dimensional bit parity check. And it is particularly the even parity check. So this one on the left is the R parity check, checking for odd number of ones. Even parity means checking for even number of ones. Therefore, the way it works is to add a parity bit per row as well as per column, so two-dimensional. And the number of ones, each row and each column, will be in even numbers. So one can see in the example on the left, all are in even numbers, so no errors. In the example on the right, you see that the second row and second column, we detect error. And so we'll be able to pinpoint exactly where the error is, and therefore we can correct this particular error as well. The second scheme, the internet checksum which we know already, what we do is to lay the data 16 bits per row and apply the ones complement sum over it. And the result is also a 16-bit integer we call checksum. This number is put into the checksum field in the packet header. At the receiving end, what we do is we take the data out and compute the checksum again. And then we compare the computed checksum to the checksum in the header field. If they don't equal each other, obviously there is an error. If they do equal each other, well, the checksum says no error detected, but now knowing the coding scheme a little, you see that there is still a chance there are errors somewhere. The last coding scheme is cyclic redundancy check, or better known as the CRC. So what we do first is uh, to create the generator G. This G will be distributed both to the data sender and receiver. So the data sender provided the data will try to find a sequence called R that is one bit shorter than the generator, such that the concatenation of D and R together will be exactly divisible by G. The center next will send not just the data, but also the R bits out. So the whole sequence will be sent to the receiver. Therefore, receiver will receive the whole sequence and try to divide it by G again. Now, if there are no bit errors here, what should the remainder be like? Well, the whole sequence together is exactly divisible by G. If there are no bit errors, then the remainder should be zero. But that is also saying if the remainder comes out non-zero, then there must be some errors somewhere in the sequence. So this is how CRC works. It's quite powerful and capable of detecting all burst errors that are less than one plus one, uh, R plus one bits long. And by burst error, I meant errors where you have consecutive bit errors. As it uh, being powerful, it's widely used in link layer technologies, especially Wi-Fi, where we see consecutive bit errors more often. Now, what's showing here is uh, to let you know the concatenation of DNR, uh, what the sender do before sending uh, the data out, is simply applying this formula. In case you're wondering how the sender figure out the R sequence, here's how. 
Given the definition, concatenation of D and R should be exactly divisible by G. Now let's apply X or R on both ends. That take us to this formula. Observe closer. This is like saying if we divide D by G, the remainder of that computation will be R. Yeah, this is what the, the center is doing exactly. R is the remainder of a division. D divided by G modular 2.